Hey there, Josh Powers with Quixel. And in today's video, we're going to go over the powerful circular transform modifier and how you can put it to use in your mixes. So let's get started. The circular transform modifier will generate a circular pattern with your mask. So let's go ahead and dive into what each of the settings in this modifier does. Circular transform has just a few settings. First, we have margins, which will resize the pattern by controlling the range between the inner and outer margins. Margins has two handles, so if we grab the left handle, we'll be pulling in the inner margin, which creates a gap in the middle of the pattern. If we adjust the right handle, we're bringing in the outer margin. Repetitions will determine the number of circular repetitions in the pattern. Swirl will swirl the pattern, which is more significant towards the center of the pattern, and gradually falls off as it reaches the outer margin. And then finally, flip, which will flip or mirror the results. Though Circular Transform is very straightforward, it packs a lot of punch for a modifier, so let's take a look at some of the ways that we can utilize it. A common use of Circular Transform is to create patterns. So let's create a quick little gold medallion here using a Circular Transform. First, let's go ahead and add a mass stack to this solid layer, and then we'll apply a square pattern. And all we're going to do is increase the repeat to a value of 2. OK, next we'll add a solid component. A solid component is merely a solid grayscale layer, and the brightness slider controls the grayscale value. Let's drag this up to 1 to give us a white value. OK, now let's turn the square into a diamond towards the center of the mask, and we'll do that by adding a projection modifier. We'll lock the projection modifier to this solid layer by holding down Alt and then clicking on the layer. With this modifier now affecting the solid component layer only, we can set the projection mode to freeform and rotate the layer 45 degrees. Then if we scale down the results, we'll have a diamond shape in the middle. If we drop back down to the solid layer below, we can change the blend mode to subtract, which will subtract the brighter pixels from the mask. Now here's where Circular Transform steps in. We can take this floor tile looking mask and make it into something completely different by applying a Circular Transform modifier. Let's adjust the inner margin handle to create a nice round space in the center of the mask, and then we'll also adjust the outer margin a tad to create some space between the edges of the texture. For this instance, I'm going to leave the repetitions at 4, but you could easily bump this value up depending on the look you want. And the same with swirl. We could add some swirl to this, but for this I'm going to leave it at zero. All right, let's add a pattern component on top of this and choose the circle option. We'll set the repeats to one, and then the spacing will manually punch in a value of 60. If we set the blend mode to add, we'll add the circle pattern to the mask. All right, now let's get crazy and add another circular transform on top of this, but we'll once again lock the modifier to the component below which will apply the circular transform to the circle mask we just made. All right, this is looking cool, but let's add another circle pattern, set the blend mode to add, and then once again make the X and Y repeat once. And then we'll adjust the spacing to 70 to have the inner circle nearly touching those little shapes we just added before. Now all that's left to do is add a bevel modifier and bring the width amount down quite a bit. And there you go. While Circular Transform is great for creating little patterns like that, we can leverage it in other more everyday uses. So let's build out a little sidewalk tree planner with just a few mask layers. To start, we'll use a square pattern component. We'll keep the repeat set to four, but we're gonna need to drop the spacing down to zero. Let's also offset the pattern to 0.5 so that we have that staggered layering look. Okay, let's go to the brightness jitter dropdown now and activate the effect. Because I don't want this to feel like it's old or damaged, I'll drop the amount slider down quite a bit so that we have some level of height variation between the bricks, but nothing that's going to stand out too much. Now we could also apply the gradient jitter and keep the effects very subtle, but I don't think it's entirely necessary in this case. So all we're gonna do now is drop down to the bevel options and give the brick edges a very small amount of bevel. All right, that's looking good. So now we're ready to drop in our circular transform modifier. We'll grab the inner margins handle and pull it up to give us a bit of a cutout in the middle here. And then we'll also pull the outer margin handle in slightly so that we have a bit of space separating the bricks and the boundaries of the texture. 
Once again, we'll leave the repetitions at four and the swirl at zero. And then finally, we'll toss on a Perlin noise, max out the frequency, and set the octaves to eight to give us a very grungy noise. We'll set this layer to multiply and then reduce the opacity down by nearly 90%. This will add some subtle irregularities to the surface of the bricks to help keep things feeling a bit more believable. If we go back to PBR mode, we can view the results of a nice little brick paved planner for a small tree that you might find on a sidewalk. As we add scan data and solid layers using a combination of height driven blending and masking, we can quickly take our height map from idea to texture in just a few minutes. All right, that'll do it for Circular Transform. I hope this tutorial was beneficial for you and helped you understand the Mixer Math Stack even further to help you create stunning textures. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.